I'm Anil Kumar sharing with you a test question on curve sketching relating to point of inflection. The question here is, for what values of P does the quartic polynomial function Q of X equals to X to the power of 4 plus PX cube plus X square have each number of points of inflection? So there are three. First one is exactly two, then we have exactly one, and C is zero. You can pause the video, answer the question, and then look into my suggestions. Now let's try to understand this question with the help of a diagram. When we say that the quartic function has so many points of inflection, how will it look like? Let's sketch that first, and then we'll analyze, okay? A quartic function could be drawn kind of like this. <clears throat> okay, let's begin with a quartic function having no point of inflection. Okay, uh, so that's the last one, right? So let's sketch it like this. This is like a parabola, correct? This is like a parabola with a flat, much flatter vertex than x squared. So we could say, for example, this is like x to the power of 4, <clears throat> let's say minus minus something let's say it so that kind of the one which i have drawn well this is not pertaining to that equation this is in general okay but it has no point of inflection right it's just a parabola without any point of inflection exactly one means you have like concave up here and then you have a cubic root here so it goes like this. Do you see that? So this parabola has one point of inflection. So that is your point of inflection. Do you see that? Now you could also have a parabola which could have two points of inflection. So let's say this graph is concave up, up to this point, and then it changes the concavity. Do you see that part? Changes the concavity and then again changes the convertity, right? So kind of going like this. So what you notice here is that we have two point of inflections. So a degree four could have any of these situations, zero point of inflection, right? None, I say no point of inflection. Is it okay? One point of inflection and two. Now we are given this equation, q of x equals to x to the power of 4 plus px cubed plus x squared. We need to find the value of p for which we could have the given situation. Point of inflection is second derivative equal to 0. So let's begin with the derivative of the function, right? So the function is x to the power of 4 px cubed plus x squared. What is its derivative? 4x cubed, right? Uh, plus 3px squared and derivative of x squared is 2x. Let's find the second derivative. The second derivative will be 4 times 3, 12, 12x squared. This will be 6px and that will be plus 2. Now what you get here is a quadratic equation. So it is same as answering b squared minus 4ac. Do you remember? b square minus 4ac that is to say we will analyze these values a is 12 b is 6 and c is 2 for you correct so let's figure out what is b square minus 4ac so b is 6 so we have 6 square minus 4 times 12 a and c is 2 now, it is not just 6. 6p six is the b square, so we'll get 6. And let me write p square now here, correct? So, strictly speaking, b is coefficient of x. So, 6p, so I should have written 6 square p square, which it is, right? So, let's find the value of p, which will make this 0. That's the whole idea. And this is the answer for all the three conditions, right? Let me rearrange this. So we get p square equals to taking these terms to the right, we get 4 times 12 times 2 times 6 times 6. Is it okay? So easy to simplify 
6 will go 2 times. 6 times 2 is 12 and uh, <clears throat> this will go 3 times and that gives us p square as equal to 4 times 2 8 or I'll write here 4 times 2 over 3. So that is p square. So what is p equals to? Well p is equal to from here let's continue on the right side okay so let me take it this place so p p square is 4 times 2 over 3 so p should be equals to square root of all this right so square root of 4 times 2 over 3 purposely this is a perfect square i'm keeping it outside is it okay so uh, so we get uh, p as equals to 2 times square root of 2 over 3. So that becomes the condition for p in this particular case. So what we realize is that if the value of p is 2 times square root of 2 over 3, in that case we'll have 1 point of inflection if however this value of p square is since it is since it is uh, all positive if it is between plus and minus when you do it actually you get plus and minus is it okay so there are two values correct so there are two different values <coughs> so uh, so so the conditions are for exactly two roots uh, for this particular function, uh, okay, uh, let me sketch another graph for the second. Uh, now, I'm going to sketch this graph for uh, for the second derivative, q dash x. Is it okay? That is better. So, we have two roots here. Okay, we have two roots. Let's say the function is now like this. This is my second derivative. So, we are looking for positive and negative values. So for exactly one, we do have the answer that is uh, p is equals to 2 square root 2 over 3. This is exactly one. For zero, this discriminant should be negative. So that means the value of p is within minus 2 square root 2 over 3 or plus square root 2 over 3, right? So it is within this portion. And for exactly two roots, we are talking about outside. Do you see that? So the values will be that P is either less than uh, minus 2 square root 2 over 3 or P is greater than 2 square root 2 over 3. Do you see that? So these become the conditions for the given situation. I hope that helps, right? So basically what we did was we analyze the discriminant b square minus 4ac right if b square minus 4ac is greater than 0 then we get 2 point of inflection is it okay if this is less than 0 then we get 0 point of inflection and if it is equal to 0 we get 1 point of inflection so that is how we found the value of p right so you can again do all these calculations, right? I hope they are correct and get the result, right? So, so that is how it should be done. I hope that helps. Thanks for watching. If you like, you can be great. Share my videos. That'll be even better. Thank you and all the best.